Hello YouTube, I'm Nye from the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield and you're watching Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar. Today's video is part two of my video about Peary Willie Johnson, the absolutely amazing gypsy jazz slash folk fusion guitarist from the Shetland Islands. If you want to watch part one, go and check it out, it's linked in the corner right now. In the first part of the video I showed you the standard shapes that Peary Willie Johnson was prone to using, they're all slidable. I also showed you how you can incorporate the La Pomp gypsy jazz style strumming pattern as played by Django Reinhardt into folk music. And in this part of the video I'm going to be looking at a specific chord progression which demonstrates some of the music theory things that Peary Willie did a lot. Um, these are three main tricks which are all borrowed from jazz music and you can take these three tricks all demonstrated in this one short chord progression, apply them to your own chord choices and you will get some really cool jazzy effects that you can hopefully use over all sorts of folk tunes. The chord progression is taken from an album called Willie's World. If you want to listen to that for free for up to three months you can even download it so you can listen to it offline. Get a free trial of Amazon Music. I've linked in the box to where you can get that. You get three months infinite music listening and downloads. Go and check it out. If you uh, take me up on that offer I will get a small commission. That will help me to continue to fund making YouTube videos. While you're there as well, hit the little like button, hit the subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know who you are, where you're playing, anything else you'd like to see videos about, and let's get into some really cool jazzy chords. So the chord progression I want to talk about is something like this. you through what the chords are and then I'll run you through how they work. So the first chord is D which is C slid up two frets, then you've got G as a thumb chord, then you slide that up two frets to get A as the thumb chord, and then you go back to your D, then you go to this which is, if you look at it, it's an F sharp seven bar chord except that now the uh, root note is not being included in the chord. So it's an F sharp 7 in the second inversion, and that means that it's an F sharp 7 with the fifth note of an F sharp scale played as the bass note. Like that. Then we've got a B minor 7 bar chord. Then an A minor 13 chord, the Django chord. And if you want to find out more about applications of the Django chord, I made a video about that very topic, and it's in the corner of the screen. So that's like this. And then the very last chord is a G major, with the thumb chord shape that I talked about in the first part of this video. Like that. So all together you've got D, and then you move your ring finger down to get the um, bass note on the bottom string. So that's an A bass note, then G, then A, then D again, then this F sharp 7 chord in the second inversion, then B minor 7, then A minor 13, and then G, and that's your whole progression. Let's have a look at exactly what clever tricks uh, Peary Willie has used in this short little snippet of chord just there. Um, the first thing is um, if you're in the key of D major you'd expect there to be D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor and C sharp diminished as the available chord options. Those are the ones that you can make out of the notes of a D major scale. But, <laughs> Peary Willie doesn't use those, he's got an F sharp 7 chord in there. Why does that F sharp 7 chord work? And once you crack that principle, you can take it and apply it to loads of things to get loads of really cool jazzy progressions. The reason that it works is that if you look at where it's played, the chord progression is D to F sharp 7 to B minor. And it's the fact that it goes to B next that's the crucial part. F sharp to B, if you count backwards through the alphabet, we're going through the notes of a D major scale. So F sharp, E, D, C, B. It's resolving down a fifth. And any time you have a chord which is resolving down a fifth, 
In jazz land, it's common practice to replace the first chord with a seven chord, or a dominant seven chord to give it its full title. So instead of playing what you would normally expect for a folk tune in the key of D major, which is to go from F sharp minor to B minor, Peary Willy is instead going from F sharp seven to B minor seven, which is just a jazzier version of a B minor chord. The reason why he's deliberately left the bass note off that F sharp seven chord is that if you do leave the bass note off and play it with the fifth note at the bottom of it instead, the fifth note is a C sharp and that sets up a really nice little walking bass line. So from D to C sharp as the fifth note of the F sharp seven chord, and then to B as the root note of the B minor seven chord. So, like that. So there's a kind of basic rule that you can take away from this and use to infuse jazz into all your folky chord progressions. And that rule is to find any place in your chord progression where you've got chords that are resolving down a fifth, um, and then replace the first chord with a seven chord to get a jazzier flavour. So for example, any time you've got an A chord resolving to a D chord, it doesn't matter, by the way, whether the chords are minor or major, it just matters what the root notes are. Um, any time you've got a B chord resolving to an E chord, any time you've got a G chord resolving to a C, all of those are down a fifth. So for example, G to C, G, F, E, D, C. So check for resolving down a fifth, change the first chord to a seven chord, and you'll get a jazzier version of the same thing, and it will sound cool. The second little trick that goes on in this jazzy chord progression from Peary Willie Johnson is this. So, going back to our list of chords in the key of D major, you'd expect there to be D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor and C sharp diminished. But here, he's playing, instead of A major, which is chord 5, he's playing A minor. This is an A minor 13 chord. So basically, at its heart, it's an A minor chord, where you'd expect there to be an A major. Now, the reason that that works is because if you're um, running from B minor down to G, you'd expect it to be like that. B minor, then A, then G using the A as a little passing chord to just kind of uh, add some neat little steps between your two chords. If you've got um, a minor chord and then you're going down two tones to get to a major chord, you can always swap the middle chord to a minor chord as well. And the place that this is commonly done is if you're in a major key, it links chord six to chord four, um, and that's a very common jazz trick to use. So we're in the key of D major. If we're in D, then chord six is B minor. And so we can link from B minor down to chord four, which is G, uh, by making chord five into a minor chord instead of a major chord. And that is a trick that's commonly used in jazz songs, and it also transposes nicely to folk music. You can do this in any key. So if you were in the key of G major, for G major, your chord 6, G, A, B, C, D, E minor, you could um, go from E minor down to chord 4, which is C, by playing E minor and then D minor instead of D major, and then going down to C. So that would give you something like... Something like that if you just played it with normal chords. So G, E minor, D minor, C. And that would work really well, so long as that chord that you've changed from a major to a minor is only a brief passing chord, it'll always sound nice. If you stay on that D minor chord for a long time, it'll clash with the tune and sound horrible. So just bear in mind that this is a trick that you can only use if the chord is not gonna be in there for very long. Peary Willy here, instead of using just plain B minor, plain A minor, instead he's used B minor 7, which is just a jazzier version of B minor, and then for the A minor he's used um, the Django chord, 
which is an A minor 13 chord. You'll notice there then that instead of a minor chord, first I played a minor 7 chord and then I played a minor 13 chord. And that is the other principle that I want to talk about in this video. You can replace any chord in a folk tune with the right kind of 7 chord. So if it's a major chord, you replace it with a major 7 chord, unless it's chord 5 in a major key, in which case you replace it with a dominant 7 chord. If it's a minor chord, you can replace it with a minor 7 chord. Now, when it comes to the other modes, other than major keys, modes all work relative to one another. I've talked about this before, and I can demonstrate it with the amazing mode wheel. And by the way, if you want to get one of these, they're really, really useful. Check them out in the card in the corner of the screen. I will post you one. But, um, so let's take um, keys related to D Ionian, D major. So in D major, our chord 1 is D, and our chord 5 is A. So if we wanted to use jazzy chords, we can use D major 7, E minor 7, F sharp minor 7, G major 7, but then the 5 chord has to be A7 or A dominant 7 to give it its full title, not A major 7. Um, and then we've got B minor 7 and C sharp diminished. If we were talking about a tune in let's take E Dorian, because that's got the same notes in it as D major, then our chord options would be the same. So chord 1 is E minor 7, chord 2 is F sharp minor 7, chord 3 is G major 7, and now the one that's the dominant chord is chord 4, E7, because it's the same set of chords that were available in D Ionian or D major. Um, so whatever mode you're in, you have to work out which one is the dominant chord for that mode. So if you're in Ionian, the dominant chord is always chord 5. If you're starting in Dorian, the dominant chord is now chord 4, because Dorian's the second mode. Um, if you're in Mixolydian, the dominant chord is the first chord, because Mixolydian starts on the fifth, the fifth note, the fifth chord in other words. Um, and if you're in Aeolian, then it's the seventh chord, which has to be dominant. So that's a really useful rule to bear in mind. So, my basic three takeaways from these Peary Willy tips are as follows. Rule number one is any time you have a chord progression where one chord is followed by a chord which is down a fifth from it, no matter what types of chords those are, whether they're minor or major, replace the first one with a dominant seven chord, or a dominant nine chord, or a dominant eleven chord, or a dominant thirteen chord, it will sound cool, it will sound jazzy, you can even use altered dominant chords there if you know what they are and you want to give that a go. But the simple principle is, use a dominant 7 chord, it will sound great. Principle number 2 is, um, if you've got chord 6 and you want to link it to chord 4, you can make chord 5 into a minor chord instead of a major chord or a 7 chord. Um, and that will make a really cool classic sounding jazzy progression to link chord 6 down to chord 4. The final principle is that you can replace any chord with the right kind of 7 when you're backing folk music. And that means that you work out what the chords available in the mode are. If you're in a major key, then chord 5 has to be a dominant. Chords 1 and 4 can be major 7s, and 2, 3 and 6 can be minor 7s. If you're in one of the other modes, you work it out relative to um, the related Ionian mode, and you go from there working out which chords go with that. And the last thing is, of course, if you want to do that quickly and easily with minimal faff, with a tool that fits in your guitar case and is made out of responsibly sourced plywood by uh, local craftspeople, then check out the Amazing Mode Wheel, and that'll help you get your head around the theory behind that a lot quicker than having to memorize it all, which takes ages. So I hope this video's been interesting to my uh, fellow music theory buffs out there. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit the subscribe button, leave me a little comment and let me know what you thought. Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to make videos about, let me know as well. And I will see you all for more videos next weekend, Saturday, 12.30.